It's late September of 2021, and I have a plan for a video where I'll collect every obtainable ribbon on one Pokémon. So, booting up my Wii, I began my first playthrough of Pokémon Colosseum in search of the Pokémon that lies at the very end of the post-game, Shadow Togetic. I never planned to make a video about this shiny hunt by itself in all honesty, but unbeknownst to me, this would start the longest shiny hunt that I've ever embarked on. For those unfamiliar with shiny hunting in Pokémon Colosseum, it seems the developers intended for Shadow Pokémon to be shiny lock, but made a slight error in the process. Across the story of Pokémon Colosseum, the player is tasked with stealing Shadow Pokémon from the various trainers across the Ore region in order to reverse the process that turned them into heartless battle machines and restore the door to their heart. When you first encounter a Shadow Pokémon, the game makes sure that it will never be shiny. For your opponent. A Pokémon's shininess is determined with a few pieces of information from the Pokémon and its original trainer, combined with a little bit of math that in Generation 3 Pokémon gives them a 1 in 8192 chance to be shiny. Because the game uses the enemy trainer's information to calculate the shiny lock, it's entirely possible for a Pokémon to spawn with information that makes it shiny for you, but you can only know by snagging it from the enemy trainer first and checking it from there. Also, once a Shadow Pokémon has been seen for the first time in a save file, its information is locked in, including gender, ability, IVs, and shininess. Meaning if you fought that Shadow Pokémon before and saved, even without snagging it, it will never be shiny if it wasn't on that first fight. But if you do catch the Shadow Pokémon and it is shiny, it won't revert after purification despite what some prevalent rumors might suggest. So in order to shiny hunt Togetic, we need to repeatedly fight this guy, Shady Guy Tony. His name likely isn't actually Tony in your copy of Colosseum, as this handsome devil is really known as Cypher Peon Fane, the ultimate final boss of Pokémon Colosseum. Fane will only spawn if the player has snagged every single Shadow Pokémon in the main story of Pokémon Colosseum and its post-game, for a total of 47 Shadows, after which he'll use his Shadow Togetic to terrorize people in the Ore region while wearing your face in an attempt to tarnish your reputation. Fane is one of a few trainers in the game to wield a full roster of six Pokémon, all at a whopping level 68 except for Togetic, who is a measly level 20. Shadow Pokémon trainers also don't always lead with their Shadow Pokémon, most of the time deliberately keeping it as their last slot if they didn't lead the fight with one. This means that we have to knock out at least four near level 70 Pokémon if we want to crack at this shiny egg if Fane doesn't lead with it. Luckily, Fane is a post-game trainer, which means we have a few extra tools at our disposal, and by that I mean access to a Master Ball and the ability to trade whatever Pokémon we want in from the Generation 3 mainline titles via the GameCube Link Cable. The last foible with hunting in Colosseum is where to save your game. Unlike every Pokémon game up to this point, you can't just save anywhere you like, instead having to save at one of the PCs scattered across Ore. The nearest PC to the outskirts stand where Fane spawns is all the way in the next town over but there's a secret save point right next to Fane, albeit an inconvenient one to use. Every time the player defeats Cypherhead Evis at Realgum Tower, they can save at the end of the credits, which will put your save point right inside the outskirts stand, which is extremely convenient and close to our target. With our Rayquaza and Master Ball in tow, it was time to hunt. And boy, did I ever hunt that Togetic. Each reset with just a single Rayquaza takes about two to three minutes, depending on if Fane graces us with the turn one Togetic and it's extremely convenient if we have one Pokémon when we catch it, as the game's always double battles will immediately prompt us to send out our new acquisition, which allows us to immediately check if we got the shiny. Knowing this, after about 10,000 resets with no shiny, I decided to reassess my team and try a new approach leveraging a different facet of Gen 3 double battles. When a Pokémon is knocked out in Gen 3 doubles, a trainer immediately sends out a new Pokémon to replace it before the turn ends. This means any Pokémon still waiting to make their move are able to attack the new targets unlike in later generations. This means that if you were to take out the first two of Fane's Pokémon with, say, a Metagross using Explosion, you would then be forced to send out another two Pokémon that would then be staring down another Explosion that you clicked at the beginning of the turn with your other Metagross. Using Double Explosion also means with three Pokémon total that we can have one Pokémon standing when it comes time to catch Togetic, allowing us to still have the luxury of sending it out immediately to check Shininess. This strategy wasn't without its flaws, after all our last Pokémon would also be sent out into the second explosion, which could cause a wipe if we critically hit ourselves. But as the hunt climbed into the five digits, there was nothing left to do but continue. Now a few of you might be ahead of me when I mentioned the goal of collecting all the ribbons, and 
Yes, this Togetic was originally going to be my champion for what is now my most viewed video on this channel of Toast's Ribbon Journey. Four months into the hunt, I eventually picked up the Double Battle E card series from Japan, which opened up the ability to hunt Shadow Scizor in the Japanese exclusive card Iru, which coincidentally also has a Togepi as a Shadow Pokemon. But after almost five months of Togetic hunting, I eventually put down English Colosseum and went fully into the Scizor hunt, which I mercifully caught within only a few weeks on March 3rd, 2022 as my first shiny Shadow Pokemon. Alright, after a bit of a time skip, it's November 2022. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are out and I haven't felt the rush of a full odds Gen 3 shiny in a while, so let's go get one. I dust off my Wii and I've got a few improvements to the double explosion team in mind. First up, we're going to bring two Gengar to get that ghost type immunity to our own explosion. To make up for the fact that we no longer have clear body to block Gyarados' Intimidate, I slap a choice band on one of them. Then we need an explosion user that can move before Gengar. So I decided to use Mew, specifically this 2005 movie Mew that I found on a used Japanese Emerald cartridge I bought. No idea if it's 100% legit, but it checks out in all the ways that matter. Since I taught Mew Explosion as a contest finisher, its choice banded explosions rip through Fane's team without touching Gengar, and switching in our second Gengar we have no worries about the next bomb that goes off, allowing us to always get to Togetic on turn 2 without fear of whiting out. I also decided to hunt Leaf Green Porygon on the side on my childhood copy. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get that fast anyway, and... So now Togetic has been snubbed by two 1 in 8192 shinies. At this point it had become a running joke in my Twitch chat that I would never get this thing. It's now September 2023, and a full two years after I began this hunt, and this time we're in the card room trying to catch Shadow Togepi. Togepi is a little more convenient than Togetic in some ways. For one, there's a PC literally right beside the Shadow Pokemon trainers here. Simply turning around and talking to them is all you need to initiate a battle. Chaser Bodesu also only has four Pokemon, and always leads with Grimer and Sableye, making his team much more predictable. This Sableye is the main problem, however, as it will always use Fake Out on the first turn, and the only way to not lose a turn here is to have a Ghost type or a Pokemon with the ability Inner Focus. I also wanted to try catching Togepi here in a dive ball. While it might not look like it at first, this main arena of Phenak Coliseum is coded as an underwater area, likely so that the move Nature Power will call the move Hydro Pump when used in the Coliseum Knockout Challenge in the main game. This by extension means the dive ball gets its 3.5x catch rate multiplier. To this end, I tried multiple teams to try and minimize the turns it took to get each Togepi. Trying such obscure oddball combinations as Inner Focus Farfetch for Fall Swipe partnered with Shadow Glalie from XD Gale of Darkness in order to have a Pokemon with Inner Focus that can also learn a sleep inducing move in Sing. I eventually settled on an Inner Focus Dragonite named after my friend Kurichan, which has an Earthquake to clear Grimer and Sableye, Dragon Rage to bring Togepi down to 4 HP, as Shadow Pokemon in the card E Room always have minimum IVs, so Togepi always has an HP stat of 44 and finally Thunder Wave to paralyze it, holding a Persim Berry to heal off any sweet kisses Togepi might land. This brought our dive ball odds to 99.994% chance to catch per ball. Of course, with my luck, rolling a 1 in 1600 chance to fail a capture is simply just too easy when we're already 16,000 resets deep into this hunt. But finally, in January 2024, I decided enough was enough. No more fancy Pokeball. No more creative team building. I swapped Dragonite for a single Soft Sand Earthquake Dusclops, and prepared a single Master Ball for Togepi. I finally returned to what I had been doing almost two and a half years ago, and decided I was going to do nothing but Togepi resets until we got out. Now I'm curious how I did that. Like, I didn't think you could exit GameCube mode once you opened the channel on the Wii. It, it, that's it. We got it. You know what, C Jiggy? I I can't even I can't even say you don't deserve to get it.
there it is. It's over. It's over. You were here. Oh, Sheepy, did Sheepy miss another full-on shiny? Oh no. Sheepy, please tell me you're here. Seeing my conviction, after 18,634 resets, we finally got a single golden egg. It's wild to close out this shiny hunt that predates even my earliest Pokemon videos on my channel. But if you'll excuse me, I have quite a few ribbons to collect that are well overdue. Thanks for watching.